Welcome to episode 10 of Chat with the Chair. I'm your host, CFMA's 2022-23 Chair, Tom Borgia. Today, I'm sitting down with CFMA's incoming chair and CFO of Madison Concrete Construction, Kevin Foley. Hi, Tom. It's good to see you. Good to see you as well. Looking forward to the chat. Let's get started with our questions. Uh, the first question is, what do you collect? Well, it's it's really kind of funny because, uh, you know, I would would buy certain things and, and just buy a lot of whatever it was. And back in the day, um, I used to uh, buy a lot of uh, albums. So collecting, quote unquote, vinyl, which is now a thing, uh, which I can't believe has become a thing, um, is uh, something I've got. So I've got a lot of uh, old albums collected from the, the 70s and 80s even. Uh, so that's that's one of my great uh, great joys is uh, albums and, and love uh, now in my new home, putting them on now and then listening to some of the old records. <laughs> Very nice. Could even be an investment opportunity, perhaps. Uh, it, it could well be. Actually, when we moved, I, I sold a few that it's like, what was I thinking buying some of these things? It's like, I never listened to this stuff. So. It, it's, it's unbelievable. I remember having a, uh, a player growing up in our house and uh, I talk to my kids now that are 13 and 15. They have no idea about any of that. No idea about vinyl no idea. They'll, they know what's out there cause it's starting to come back, but they have no idea that mom and dad actually used to listen to stuff like that back in the day too. So it's, it's great to see stuff come back around. Well, yeah, and I realized that when my son-in-law was like collecting this vinyl and he started seeing my collection and actually I have to retrieve my Bowie uh, collection back from him because he he snuck it all out and I discovered it when we were moving. I, I will tell you as a, as a quick sidebar too with music, it's always interesting when my kids come to me now and say, hey, have you heard this new song? Uh, that they may hear on the radio or find it on iTunes or whatever it may be. And I've got to actually go back to them and say, hey, this song was from 1972. It's not really a new song. It's just a new artist doing a remake of uh, an original <laughs> song. And they, they think it's like the original. And I'm like, no, guys, you, you don't even you don't understand. You don't understand. So. Yep. <laughs> music, uh, mu music uh, joins us all for sure. For sure. So let's jump into the next one. So. As you know, uh, CFMA has been working on a next generation uh, initiative for the last year, and we actually have a task force put together to look at some initiatives and things that we can do to attract the next generation of CFMA members and leaders uh, to the association. So thinking back, can you share some of the uh, some of the experiences maybe when you were a young leader uh, and what were some of the things that you had to you had to overcome? Yeah, well, I had the interesting I, I thought it was kind of an interesting experience of having my first accounting department when I was in my mid-20s. I get uh, transferred to be the office manager of a daily racing form plant. And uh, other than than people who know anything about horse racing, people would no, have no idea what that publication is. I get a lot of blank stares if I mention it. Um, but that first accounting department, first staff that I had as office manager was a uh, fully unionized staff. So I had to learn to work with with union people as well as um, the shop steward uh, who worked for me. She had uh, started working there before I was born. So I had, besides a union learning experience, a generational learning experience there too. And, uh, you know, the, the whole thing is, as, as a, a younger leader learning to communicate and spend some time talking with um, my staff and, and particularly um, our shop steward and uh, uh, finding out how Joan, um, you know, would kind of instruct me on things where I might be up against the guardrails of what uh, what our contract tells us I can do um, with the staff. But, um, you know, I was interested in learning. I, I tried to make sure that everybody knew that I had their best interests in mind and uh, uh, made sure that I was processing things for the unions uh, faster than my predecessor so that uh, nobody was waiting for payments or anything. And, uh, uh, even worked back then with adjusting schedules, which is now still a, a big thing of uh, people 
uh, you know, in the Los Angeles area, having to get in at different times of the day that might be a little easier based on the traffic pattern. So, you know, just work things out as long as we were getting the work done, uh, everything seemed to go, uh, go pretty well. And people were happy when I was able to listen to them rather than kind of have my, my own viewpoint that I had to be strong and, and have a particular uh, a set of rules. I just by being flexible and communicating really helped out. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's that's really good good advice and and great experience that you had kind of when you were younger. I know I know for a lot of folks out there, and kind of when I look at myself as well, you try to listen, um, listen first before you speak. And a lot of the experiences that we all have are through through our work experience, maybe through our family experience, and the other things that we that we go through. And I think I think one of the important things maybe for our next gen leaders out there are to have that quiet confidence, right? So there's a quiet confidence within. Uh, that many people have where you don't feel like you have to be the first at the table to talk. You don't need to answer everybody's question maybe before they uh, before they're done asking the question and just be able to take everything in, process it, um, and then be able to come out with a with a response. And sometimes no response is, is fine too. You don't always have to speak just to speak. But I, I think for for all leaders, not even really just next gen, having that quiet confidence and the ability to listen is super, super important. So re really good advice there. I appreciate you sharing that. Well, thanks, Tom. So next up, um, what is one thing that people would be surprised to know about Kevin Foley? Well, I know you aren't surprised about this. I mean, a lot of my my closer uh, CFMA friends uh, may be aware of it, but in, in uh uh, my past, I was uh, on uh, the show Jeopardy with Alex Trebek, and I am a Jeopardy champion. So um, I, I get to say that it was a really great experience. And uh, so those those of you who don't know me particularly well, you've now learned something unique. We may have the first chair of CFMA who is a Jeopardy champion. So well, well, well done, Mr. Foley, and definitely <laughs> something you. that many of us don't know about for sure. <laughs> and and yeah. for, the, for those of you out there, next year's uh, Chat with the Chair, I think, is going to have a little bit of a Jeopardy feel to it. So it'll be a little bit of a different spin than uh, what the crowd's gotten with me this year. But uh, there's a little teaser for everybody. There may be a little Jeopardy involved next year. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> All right. So next up, uh, enough questions uh, for you, Kevin. Uh, usually on Chat with the Chair, we give our guests uh, one question to ask me. It can be uh, personal, professional, family, funny, something about my hair, anything that you want, any question you've got, uh, I'm, I'm open and willing to answer. So, uh, fire away when ready. Well, Tom, one of the things that, that has interested me in, in, in watching how you, um, work with people and, and your own style, I just, uh, was kind of interested to, to know what have you learned regarding leadership as, as anybody in particular, um, been a person that you've uh, modeled on and, and learned more from than maybe some others? That's, it's a really good question. And uh, I, I appreciate the, appreciate the comments and the feedback uh, on my leadership style. I think in, in my personal opinion, um, everybody has a leadership style, but uh, part of that is to never stop learning from everybody else. So uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, I'm more of a listen first and process and understand uh, maybe than some other leaders. But throughout the years, there have been so many great people that have kind of come through my life, again, whether they're personal, um, professional through business or just friends that I've that I've learned from. And even today, I sit here, I continue to learn and mold my leadership style. So I don't have a, a, a so to speak, black and white leadership style. But a, a lot of it for me goes back to actually when I was in college. And uh, for those of you that know me, I'm a big sports person. And uh, playing baseball in college, our head coach uh, was just a phenomenal leader. And, and one of the best parts about him was he, he didn't talk a ton. It was really he knew when to speak. He knew the words to use. He, he knew how to motivate. And I think most importantly, he knew how to bring together a team. And so you bring together 25, 30 guys uh, from different backgrounds, uh, different ethnicities, different financial backgrounds, just an entire melting pot of people and try to make that a team without really saying that much or getting on people's backs. He just knew he knew the right time to say the right thing 
and his leadership style was a was a quiet confidence, like I just mentioned a couple minutes ago. And that that's something I really fed off of, not only when I was in school, but really after I got out of school. So uh, a, a lot of my leadership style, I think, has come through him. Uh, and one of the things in speaking with him after uh, after I left school and through the years was uh, one of his big leadership things was using John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. So I don't know how many people know about the Pyramid of Success out there, but it's kind of led me to not only my leadership style, but just my personal philosophy on life. Uh, a lot of things I can tie to that pyramid of success. Um, so again, there have, been a, there have been a number of leaders over the years that I've learned from. But uh, when I look back, some of the really strong foundational aspects of my leadership style come from my coach in college and then other leaders that I've I've been fortunate to be around for many, many years. That's pretty cool to be uh, picking it up and focusing on somebody's style like that uh earlier in life so you know congratulations for for doing that and i and i appreciate that because i in working with you have have seen how um you listen uh so well i think before jumping in which was not one of my strengths in a lot of my lifetime (laughs) (laughs) i promise you i promise you i i was not perfect during any period of time uh, there as well. And over the years, I've gotten I've gotten a lot better at it. But I will I will tell you this much. So for those of you that actually look over my shoulder on, on my wall, uh, there's a little yellow pyramid of success. And that's actually the pyramid that uh, I, I look at every day when I walk into my office. So uh, it's something I try to pass down to our newer folks here at Jay Raymond and, and for our interns and all the younger folks that come in. They say, hey, how did you get started and who was one of your most influential leaders? I can point to that on my wall and say, hey, this is from 25 years ago and something I still try my hardest to follow today. So uh, I've been very fortunate, again, to have some great people in my life uh, to help me uh, mold that leadership style. No, thanks for sharing that, Tom. Sure, sure. Well, Kevin, thanks for joining me today. And a special thank you to all of our viewers out there for watching this year. Uh, it's It's been a great, great opportunity to get to meet some of the greatest people in CFMA, our leaders, uh, mentors, and just great members from all across the country. So be sure to tune in next month when Kevin takes over and uh, he'll jump into Jeopardy style, getting to know some of the best CFMA members from around the country. So thanks to everybody out there and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Thank you, Tom. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.